right, guys. Do, 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 do. What are we going to do today is the question. That is the question always, right? What are we going to do at Paint with Josh? So, hi, everybody. Welcome to Paint with Josh. It's Friday night freestyle. It's going to be fantastic. I'm home alone. There's no kids. There's no distractions. There's no anything happening. So we're going to do a wicked awesome painting, right? Now, what you can't see is hidden down here is a black and white painting. This tutorial is coming out on Wednesday, but I figured I'd do a similar but different black and white painting as our, our uh, Friday Night Freestyle for tonight. This one is already sold, right? So you can buy this one before we even get started. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, go over there and you can purchase this painting. Search for number 738, and that's this painting right here. If this painting sells, then I'll go live again later on tonight and paint 739, which will be like an eclipse seascape. It'd be really cool. So you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich, and we're going to be ready to do this awesome black and white painting. I'm going to show you. I don't need to show you the colors because we only have black and white, right? But I'll show you the brushes we're going to be using. So we're going to use the one inch and the two inch brush. You don't have to have these exact brushes. They're hog hair brushes, sort of firm, natural bristles, right? And then we're going to use two of the Gak Doctor fan brushes. And of course, Probably the old palette knife. If we decide to do like a, a snowy mountain, the palette knife is really gonna come in handy. So it all depends on what we decide to do. Should we keep it a desert theme like this guy? Like a soft, soft, distant little desert theme painting? Or should we go crazy, you know, mountain, like Bram style, Bob Ross style mountain with a bunch of forest and stuff? You guys tell me in the comments right now and you can decide what the painting looks like today. Let's see, a fried bologna sandwich from Kentucky, Knoxville, Tennessee. Got Virginia over here, you guys are awesome. So what should we do guys, a crazy Bob Ross mountain or should we do like a, like a soft little deserty, little desert scene? Oh, we got mountain over here on Facebook. Let's see, watching from California, good afternoon to Jonah over there. Florida, we got beef brisket, the first one. You wanna do a mountain, a giant mountain scene? All right, let's do uh, you know, I really like this little, I really like this. I just don't want the tutorial to be too close to what we do today. And then there's no reason to watch the video on Wednesday, right? All right. Now we're gonna use our four brushes, maybe five with the knife. And then first let's take our two inch brush. I don't wanna go into that one inch brush. Let's take our two inch brush. We're literally gonna pull out our black, right onto the brush. And we've already primed our canvas with Bob Ross liquid white. Everybody has a jar of this stuff. Looks just like that. You take that and you put it on your canvas and you just want the littlest bit. Look at the smallest little bit that we have on there. Not goopy, not all crazy and thick, right? You want to be able to see the ridges of your fingerprint or in my instance, if you wear gloves, you want to see all those little teeny tiny dimples in the canvas. So those are the good parts, right? Now we've taken our brush, we've loaded it full of our black color and I want to come in from the top first and watch it just start to blend with all of that liquid white as it comes down. And then we start to work it. What do you want to see? You want to have like a crazy little bright area for our sky, for our little clouds. What do you want? All depends on your painting, right? You don't want to make it too dark though. So don't use what? What are our three P's of paint with Josh, guys? The amount of what? Give me the first one. Somebody know the first P of paint with Josh? Anybody? We're going to take that. We're going to blend it down. Just become softer and softer and softer as we go. Now I want to get all the color off of this brush. Come back here and see if anybody knows the first P. Let's see. First P, first P, anybody? Anybody? Let's see. Pressure? No, that's the second P. There we go. Ricky Kirk. Ricky Kirk's got it. The first P is paint. The second P is pressure. How much pressure does it take to blend and push all this paint outwards, right? So like I said, let's get rid of all the paint off of this brush because we don't need it at all. And again, if this painting sells, then uh, I'm going to come back on and do this crazy sunset eclipse seascape on a 16 by 20. And that canvas is only going to be about 230 something like that. So this one's about 300 and then the next one will be about 200. All depends if the first one sells that'll incentivize me to come back and do another one, right? So I know you guys love my shirt. Your girlfriend probably watches me while you're at work. It's probably true. We've got like almost 700,000 followers now. It's insane how many followers we have. So let's take our two inch brush, same old one that we just did. Let's come into our lightest area first and just start crisscrossing, right? Haven't used any white yet. It's only the white that's on the canvas uh, that, you know, it's going to allow this stuff to blend. So we're going to crisscross back and forth and it's all going to start to soften itself, right? It becomes soft as silk. Oh, I want to be up here. I want to touch this camp. Don't touch it though. It's wet. All right? Staying away from our light area, leaving it lighter than normal, lighter than the rest. All right? We'll come up here because it doesn't have as much paint on it. 
That's rule number one, right? Now, how much, what are, what's, what's, what's number two? What's the second P of paint with Josh? Does anybody know? We need to get more paint on the side of that. So we'll do that a little bit later. Does anybody know the second P? That's what I'm doing right now. How much what does it take to push and blend? Does anybody know? I'll give you a shout out. Hey, Sal, what's going on? Patrick's watching. Pressure, Linda Edwards knows pressure, right? That second P of paint with Josh. We've got paint, we've got pressure, right? How much pressure are we putting on the canvas? How much are you pushing? How much are you blending? We've got our angle in there too, right? The angle of the brush a lot of times is very important. And what's the final P? The final P is almost the most important one because if you haven't done the final P, then how can you ever expect to be good, right? So anybody know the final P of paint with Josh? I'll give you a shout out here. Let's see. Anybody, what's the final one? Oh, Susan came in with all three. Oh, here we go. Country Native over on, uh, over on YouTube's got it. And Lisa Zitterman over on, on uh, Facebook. So thank you guys for knowing all three Ps of Paint with Josh. So again, this painting is about $300 plus tax, but you get free shipping anywhere in the world. Doesn't matter where you live, ship it to you for free. And that's about as far as I want to come down. And you have to imagine, you want to stop where your mountain's going to stop. This is about how far I want my mountain to come down, so I'm gonna stop blending right there. I'm gonna stop bringing down all this color because we need a little bit of light underneath it. And look, because we didn't put any color over that little white area, that remains bright. It's like a little soft cloud out there all on its own. Don't need to even do anything. So let's wash the brush off, dip it into our thinner, into the trash can, into the old beater bucket, and beat the devil out of it. And everyone says on, on our reels, so you never beat the devil out of it. I'm like, I beat the devil out of it all the time. So this is a uh, five gallon bucket. It's got a golf ball basket down in the bottom. That's the only thing I had when I very first started painting. And I've still been using it for the last four years. It's the most perfect little thing. And every time the, the bag gets too dirty, I transfer it into a new bag, throw that bag away and throw the bucket away if I need to. And then poof, I still got that thing. It's, just, it's probably gone into 50 different buckets over the four years we've been painting. Just crazy. So let's throw in some gorgeous clouds. And remember, we're using so many colors that's gonna be hard to remember which color comes next, right? Oh no, never mind. we're just using two. So let's take our white and let's come up and sort of connect into this bit of brightness. Right, right around there, we'll sort of become that part, pushing this guy out, just blending it whichever which way you want. It doesn't matter. Just have a little bit of brightness coming out there. So fantastic, right? And if you're an OG like me or Bram or Bob, whoop, you throw the brush on the ground. That's what you do. And then you grab a new brush. That brush didn't want to be used. So if you're an OG like me or Bram or Bob, or Steve Ross, right? You come in here with your two inch brush, just using the corner, right? Just the corner of it is all we're using to make these little teeny tiny circles. Not the whole brush, not going like this, right? Just the teeniest, tiniest little circles making small contact with the paint that's up there. Little bit of pressure. And then we do our rotations, right? We have to have these little differences, right? Everybody knows about differences in color, but have you been watching recently? Do you know about the three D's of Paint With Josh? As we pick up the old brush that fell on the floor. Do you know the three D's of Paint With Josh? Because they're sort of new. I'll give you the first one. Depth, right? The amount of depth that we have in our paintings comes from our shadows and stuff, right? So take some of this darkness, just dabbing it in. Come back up here, dab in a few little shadows just to change it. Come up here and mix it again. Look, all of a sudden changes into something even more cool. So who knows the three D's of Paint With Josh? What's the next D, the second D? Let's see. Who knows the second D of Paint With Josh? Anybody know the three D's? Anybody at all know the three D's? We got practice, we got everybody knows the three P's over on Facebook. Do we know the three D's though? Well, I guess nobody wants to talk to me over here on Facebook, so that's fine. That's all good. So the next one is we got our depth and then distance. You have to add distance in between paintings or in between pieces of your painting, right? So now, instead of just using white again, because we've already used the white, let's go into black. And remember, it's not just pure black, it's whatever is gonna, it's gonna mix with on the canvas, right? We even just snuck a little bit of white over there. So it's not pure black, and then it's gonna mix in with all this white color up here. So maybe we had this giant section of black, just whatever, reverse cursive, like Da Vinci used to write in reverse. Just bring that bit of darkness down. <laughs> leaving the little areas for it to grow. That's all we want. And look, just by doing that, we have our very bright, then we have our next bit of cloud, then we have this bit of cloud, then we can do another cloud and another cloud and just build depth and distance, right? And then what's our final D of Paint With Josh? Anybody know? 
Does anybody want to take a stab at it? What would the last D be? We have depth, distance, and what? Somebody tell me, please, because I forget all the time. I always forget. If you guys aren't paying attention in class, then I'm going to have to start giving out demerits. Just going to give out a demerit every so often. Look at that. Oh, that's wicked. Anybody know? The final D. Direction, detail. Depth, distance, and details. Jeffrey Cooper, you're the first person I saw anyway that said it. So, details, right? Leaving all these little differences. Our, our differences in color have now become depth, distance, and detail, right? The three Ds of paint with Josh. Swiping, softening, going every which way. Look, we're, we blended it so much that you can take and go across the can with canvas with a little bit of pressure and not smudge all the paint everywhere, right? Now, we've just added more dark to an already dark sky, which means we're going to need more white on our brush because the white's going to want to blend in faster, right? Now, I'm not loading it all the way up to the squeezy bit down here, right? It's not all the way into the bristles. We don't need that much paint. My goodness. Just enough, right? But look, at it's thick. It's hanging off the edges of it. Almost like this is how we do our waterfalls, and you can just and drop it off like it's on a knife, right? So we want to take a lot more paint than we come in through here. Just pop in that real brightness. You don't want to leave it chunked like that. Let's get a little bit of that off. It's going to grow like crazy, right? Coming in there, popping it out, just making a ginormous mess. Because why not? It's fun, right? It's not supposed to be a, a stressful thing. It's supposed to be fun what we're doing. And if you're worried about your clouds so much that you're stressing over it, trying to get them perfect, right? Then it's no longer fun. And what are we up here doing, right? We're not up here to, to study. We're up here to have a good time, learn a couple things, right? Mix with our two-inch brush, practice stuff that you might not have tried before. Maybe hear something for the first time and go, oh, I never thought about it like that, or I never would have done that that way, right? Very cool. Look at these super bright areas where the paint's still really thick. Watch, let's bring them up. Bring them up into the shadow. Ooh, yeah, like that. Don't want to have them touch too much, though, right? Got to leave those little dark areas in there. Very awesome, just awesome. Take this guy at the bottom, wherever you feel like the bottom of it would be, just straight sideways swipes, right? And all of a sudden, a little bit of a little, little color off the bottom. You need to take the teeniest, tiniest little bit of darkness. See, even that's too much. So I'm gonna get some of that off. Just beat it off onto the brush, beat it off onto the buck, the bucket, the brusher, the cleaner, right? There we go. Couple little dark swipes, you get that soft little flat bottom to the cloud, it makes it real far away. Very cool. Now let's wash our brush off because we've got too much paint. Too much paint on the brush, guys. So you guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich? And while you're typing all of that info in, I'm gonna tell you that on Sunday, right, not tomorrow, but the next day at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time, we're gonna be battling against Bram again, and he wants to do a sunset skis seascape. I don't know if he knows that that's like my wheelhouse, baby. That's, that's where I make my cash, the Sunset Seascapes. So, you're on, Brim. It's going to be 3 o'clock. It's going to be on TikTok. And hopefully this time, we won't have any technical issues, and we'll be able to download the stream. That had nothing to do with him or I. It was just, for whatever reason, the thing was unavailable. I even, I even went to my TikTok agency, and I was like, guys, I really need this stream. I've got people on YouTube and people on Facebook that have to see this. They don't use TikTok. They want to see this video. Can Anything you can do, please call someone over at TikTok, and please get them to let me just download it. Nothing they could do. So it was unavailable, and I was bummed. And then we put out that post, and everybody was so sad. And I was like, I know, guys. I was sad, too, because I wanted you guys to see it. We had a lot of fun just chit-chatting, and it was more about just painting versus having to teach, right? We both couldn't just obviously teach, we'd be talking over each other on every single sentence. So we just hung out and we talked and chatted and it was a, you know, I, I thought it was cool because I was almost like interviewing Bram. Like, oh Bram, when you do this, right? How would you do that if you did it on a black canvas or on a white canvas or whatever? Like normally you do that little scrapey bit where you scrape in your sticks and twigs, right? And if you do that on a black canvas, it doesn't show through. To white, obviously, because there's no white underneath it. So I was trying to get, trying to get some uh, some little tidbits of Bram, trying to pick his brain for you guys, just to see what he would say, and then we can all steal our techniques from Bram, right? All right, let's do this. I think we've got just enough clouds, but what we need now is a giant old mountain, and I just want to go crazy with it, right? So I'm gonna take my black, not too much black, 
I'm gonna get a little bit of white because I don't want it to just be straight up black. But I want to keep it dark. I don't want it to be bright either, right? So we're gonna go back to our black and dip it down in there. There we go. Remember, whatever we put up here is gonna get brighter immediately. So we're gonna scrape that up and who knows, just come in here like this. Just all crazy, just a nuts, crazy sharp little peaker right here. Popping it down, sliding it. You decide what you want it to look like. That's what it's all about. Scrape the paint, that way it doesn't grow too much on us. Right, leaving a little bit of that darkness underneath the white. You can almost see the bottom of the cloud. It makes it look like it's floating past the mountain. You get that depth. That's one more little bit of detail. And it gives you all the distance, right? So I'll scrape it up. And maybe we had a whole nother piece down here that was just separated just by a little bit of brightness. And then we'll come over here just because there's all this paint on my palette. And we'll mush it on and just watch how much our, our mountain's gonna grow like crazy, right? And that's the fun part is it's supposed to be a random thing, right? We have no paint on the brush. So we're only using our what, guys? The second P of Paint With Josh, what is it? The amount of what is going to allow us to see whether or not this mountain grows like crazy or stays put where it is. Does anybody know? Anybody know? Let me see it in the comments, guys. Pressure Country Native over there on YouTube. They're paying attention. Pressure. That's right. So with the amount of pressure and the little different angles that we're pulling on our brush, we decide how far we want the mountain to come down, how much of it's going to pull out, Right? How far you want to drag it to the side. Little different things you can do to make yours look one way versus a different way, right? Now we're down into this darker, thicker bit of paint. Maybe that guy comes down here. Who knows? Who knows, right? Saving that little bit of light back there. Just for whatever reason, it gives you a cool little thing, right? And then maybe our eyeballs can look at it and go, ooh, it would be neat if that was sloping down that way. And then we had this little peak and it came over here. And it slid down, it's connected to this little thing over there. We got this, our little valley in the back. You just start making things up, right? Make it up and then go back and fill in your little lines. You've already got it in your brain, what you want it to look like. Now all you gotta do is fill it in where you've already preset it with your little swipes, right? Just like that, gonna have a wicked cool little thing. You can see, brought it down just to where we got the lightest bit of our sky down here so we can tap into this white and bring a lot of our uh, brightness on our fog and mist, right? People ask me all the time, how do you paint in the mist? And I go, well, you really don't. You just kind of tap at the, at the canvas and the brush does it for us, right? We don't really do anything. You just kind of go pop, 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 and it'll do it for you. That's the best part about these cool little hog ear brushes, right? So let's take our, let's do our, let's do our highlights first. Now, how are we gonna highlight our snow? Well, we're gonna do it in black and white, obviously. So let's take our white over here just a lot of it, because as soon as we take our teeniest little scrape through of our dark color, just so it's not the purest white, right? I want it to be the kind of a bright color, a brightish gray color, just not pure white. Mix it all the way down to the palette itself, scraping through to the, the bottom, and that way you get those little hidden bits of white streaks. There we go. Got this light, light, light gray color, and let's mix up a bit of our darker shadow with the teeniest bit of light in it until it's just slightly dark, right? There we go. That's a good looking color right there, right? It's a different color than what we have up here. It might actually be very close to the same color, which will work out perfectly in our favor, okay? Now we're gonna take our shadows first. We're gonna scrape up a little bit, gonna come off the back side of the peak and just start dropping them down. See how it comes down like that? Leaving little differences in little different places. It doesn't all have to look the same. Very light pressure, so light. Just letting whatever is on the knife, drag itself offwards, right? Come over on this side, pulling it down in those same little directions. We've got this little ridge that lives over here. Very cool, it's like Make it like a big S-shaped ridge. Have it come down this way, right? Very neat, maybe back in here, off the back of this guy, there was a little bit of dark color. And maybe I'm almost missing a bit of the old looking mountain. So let's take our gray, right? It's not white, it's gray. Don't wanna to have too much at the very beginning because we're gonna come up here to the top and you don't wanna cover too much of it up and just slightly start falling down over the tip of some of those shadows, right? Just coming down, maybe we got a little bit of area where this, the light just can't reach. Ooh, oh, this one's making me cold already, guys. Maybe the light came over on that bit of shadow on that side, right? Wrapped around. Doesn't all have to be perfect. And in which case, we don't wanna have like a little straight line, so let's chuck another thing out that way. Oh, guys, that is neat. 
Look at those, just barely touching it, it's coming off. And all the pens, you want to leave a little bit of darkness, remember, so don't cover up every single bit on every single thing. Even if it's a little teeny tiny piece of shadow, that's what you got to leave. Okay, we came down in here, starting to mix in with our little bit of valley now, and it's going to start mixing with all those dark bits of paint, which are going to help it change all on its own, a little bit up here on the top, just using the tip top of the knife because I don't want the paint to go everywhere. All right, mixing it up, and we just had that little piece of light right there, right? Now, I'm going to fill my knife back up again. Come up here. Watch me just bounce over these shadows. Pull it out to the side. doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be straight. Right? And we come down, bounce down, pull it down here. Right? And then we're going to go back and fill it all in. Very lightly. Right? If you don't have enough paint on your brush, you're going to hear that straight. So when you're down here at the end, off the side, it sounds like you're scraping at the door like a cat trying to get in. Right? You want to have that thick paint on there so you can just let it flow and break. Sometimes you get a little too thick and you got to scrape it up and throw it back in there. Right? Very cool. We decide what we want it to look like. Come back in here. Maybe there was a whole nother shelf off this side and just by slightly pulling down, letting it break, getting all those cool little bits of action, right? That's what you want. Let it flow down into our shadows. Not every piece is going to be lit. So you don't have to have it lit. You gotta keep some areas nice and dark. That's why they're there. The shadows are vital. You have to let them play with the with our highlights. All right, any area where it's starting to get too gray because it's mixing in with our little shadowy spots, let's go back and add just a little bit of white. A little puff. A little bit of whiteness up there, right? But not everywhere. I love the, the, the uh, peak of this guy right here. So cool. So neat. Okay, let's do that. That looks cool. I think just with two little colors is all we need to do. Now we're going to take our brush, and you have to do this part very lightly. The more you do it, the more it's going to start to fade and look blurry like a photo. All right, so down here, it's a little blurry. Up here where it's nice and crisp, that's where the camera had focused. That's exactly what, the, what it reminds me of, anyway. And I like to do that. I like to soften it because it's far away. It's not, we're not right up here on the canvas looking at all of this texture, right? We're way off in the distance, and this mountain is just really far away, so we're not going to see every single detail. You're not going to see every single bit of, of texture, every bit of shadow, every bit of change, or anything. It's just not going to be there. You're not going to see it. And if you do see it, then you're standing way closer than we're standing, right? One more little piece that came down in here. I like that. For whatever reason, I love this little bit. It's like... I didn't want to make it a straight line down, throw our little ridge in there, throw some of our bit of brightness off the back in different places, maybe like the light's trying to reach over the edge of the mountain, a couple little streaks back in there, right? That's all you need. Very cool. But go back, swipe those guys up, right? Now, I need to come in, right? And I don't suggest the beginners do this because it's, you got to have the right amount of the third P. Does anybody know the third P of Paint with Josh? Because that's what you need. And if you didn't you have the third P enough, then you're going to be pushing too hard with the second P. All right? Does anybody know what's that third P? Look at all of those things, you guys. Wow, that's cool. Practice, that's right. Brooke Coop, Brooke and Minna. I bet you Minna's watching. And Minna would love a shout-out. Minna's like the, my cutest little four-year-old fan. And uh, she's just fantastic. Her cute little, little painting. So... Minna, I love that you're watching, and uh, listen to your mom. She knows best, okay? We're going to tie it. We're going to take this brush, and we're just going to start to make the fog. This is how you mix up that fog. People ask me all the time, how do you do it? We don't. The brush does it, right? We push, we push, we push. Sometimes we take a bit of white, and we move it out this way, right? Because you're building that bit of mountain that's underneath that we can't see. It's hidden by all of this mystery. That's why they call it mist. Because it's mysterious. What's down there? You can see how I've turned my brush this way, right? First we were over here, and we were tapping at it going this way. Now I'm tapping at it going this way, pulling it towards myself. Because it's a different side of the mountain. It's a different angle. And sometimes I like coming up above, just barely above the horizon. Just because you get that cool little bit. Sometimes it'll look like our sky is wrapped around. See? Like that. Our cloud is wrapped around. And now it's a whole cloud coming down in here. And we decide how much we want to bring up how much color you want to bring down. 
how light you want to have it, how much depth, how much distance, how much detail do we want to have in there, right? Just by mixing it up and making a mess. So cool. Just a little floating mountain out there in the distance. All right, you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Hang on, let's do this. Just a little floating mountain out there in the distance. This is for the TikTok. Because then I'll go in and I'll clip this bit right at the end. And that will entice you to want to learn how to paint this painting, right? At least in my mind. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what I was saying before. But we need to start making a little bit of our... Uh, our mixture for our trees and different stuff. And you can see how I haven't gone all the way to the end of the canvas. You don't want to go to the edge because we want to have room to put our trees in right here. So keep your mountain in the middle. That was my one, my, my one faux pas in the beginning when I very first started painting. I always took my mountain all the way to the side. Each wave, like, I take all the texture all the way down on each side, right? I make it misty over here because it softens it. It makes it ready for a new layer. If you have all the texture that's right here, and you try to put a big old tree right in front of it, it's gonna mix with all that paint. It's not gonna be good. You don't wanna have a lot of paint out there on the edges. You wanna have a nice little soft little floating mountain. Very cool. <clears throat> okay guys, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? We're gonna come over here. I can't believe how quiet in the house. Tiffany's watching from Vegas. What's up girl? Let's see, we got Iowa grilled cheese. Excellent. Salad sandwich with beetroot. I don't know that I'm coming to your house for lunch. I don't know. I'm getting hungry, though, guys. Fundamentals are dampness, drive, and determination. That's good. That's very cool. Let's see. Will this become a tutorial? Yes, this is a, a live tutorial, and uh, it's going to be on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm, I'm double simulcasting it. Let's see. Watching, eating a peanut butter sandwich and banana. I've heard that, but I've never tried it. Watching from Jersey, North Carolina, Tennessee with an Italian sandwich. Italian is my favorite sandwich, right? A spicy Italian with some hot peppers. Woo! Doggy watching from Illinois. Hey, Jeffrey Cooper watching from Minnesota. That was cool. Let's see. Grilled cheese. No, grilled PB&J. I'm sorry. We're going to have to stop the show. And someone needs to make me a grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Because that, it sounds like witchcraft. And it sounds amazing. Like a warm, crispy, grilled uh, uh, peanut butter and jelly. God, somebody get over here and make me a warm peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I need it up in the studio immediately. DC, DC, I know you're on a date with your with your fiance, DC, but come over. <laughs> I'm just kidding, DC. I love you. Have fun on your evening. DC's gonna come over tomorrow. We're gonna uh, hang out. So let's take our brush, run it through all of our thick dark paint, and we're gonna come over here and just start tapping into that light area. That's why we make it light like that, right? Adds the distance back there. Sometimes we come up real close to the mountain. Sometimes not. Just tapping it in. Very cool, working all the color down. It's gotta be down. How tall do you want your trees to be? Right, remember, don't go all the way to the side. But how tall do you want your forest to be? You can't just do it like this as the same brush all the way. It's gonna look like a smiley face. Right, you gotta bring it down a little bit. Bring it down to Chinatown, right? Now we're gonna take our brush, just like this, big old two inch brush. Gonna turn it, gonna flatten it. A little bit of pressure, push it up. You're gonna watch all those little streaks as they streak up. Bam, just like that, flattens our whole bit of forest. Leaves some light areas, leaves some dark areas, right? All It does it all for us. It's a thousand trees right there. Somebody, somebody uh, uh, pause this, screenshot it, count and tell me how many trees we actually did. We're gonna be here waiting for you to finish. Oh, sorry, I forgot we were live. Okay, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna start to tap into the trees, just like this. Right, bring it down. Look at all the colors start to mix in with that, uh, that white that's underneath, right? Just like that. Bring it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Come up, come down. It's like a roller coaster ride. Woo! Then we come over to the loop de loop. No, don't do a loop de loop. You'll come up into your mountain. That'd be bad. All right, we're just tapping it, bringing it down. My point is, you don't want it on one straight line across. There they go. The more times you pull them, the less they're going to look like reflections of a tree. All right? So it all depends on what we want to put in there. And I actually don't want to put anything. I like having that little mist across. Watch this. I bet you if we grab a bit of white. Right? And we ran it right through both of these little areas. We might get like a little cloud floating along the water. Just like that. Oh, you guys, right? Just mix it up. Come back with our one inch brush, make it soft. All based on our pressure. Right? Letting it blend down. Try not to blend it away. Look at that. Just like it's floating on top of the water. Trying to make the bottom the right, you know, the same bit of straightness. So it's floating on that bit of water back. Oh, God. That is cool. 
That is wicked. All with our pressure, right? We got our little cloud. It's kind of floating in. Very neat. Very neat. Oh, I don't know if I want to sell this one anymore, guys. I really like it. Woo! So, well, like I said, you can buy it. You can go over in, the, in the, my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Once you're in my store, search for the word Facebook Live or 738 738. And that'll be this painting. It's available at 40% off its normal price and free worldwide shipping. Oh, yeah, just a couple little bits of soft water something. Bam, a little glare off the water. That's really cool. That is really, really, really neat. I like that bit of cloud back there instead. Woo! Okay, now let's wash off this brush and see what else we can do. We'll put some big old giant tappy trees in there, right? You want to call them the H word trees, but no, we call them tappy trees. Sounds the same, but it's not. A little bit different. Okay, let's see here. We gotta mix up a bit of our, well, actually we don't have to mix anything. We just need to pull more black down and make this color a little bit darker. I don't wanna mix it with any white. I want it to be the darkest it can possibly be because it needs to stand out as in the foreground, really close. Right? The closer we get, the deeper, darker shadows. So much darker than this, much darker than that, much darker than anywhere on the canvas. That's why I say don't use pure black back here. Save your, your pure black for the front. Now, let's take a little fan brush. I will use this fan brush. Why not? This thing's about to fall apart. It's like so wiggly. Let's take this. Let's see if we can't do like some bram trees. Let's see if we can do an homage to bram trees here. And we're going to come over here. We're going to tap like this, right? Got to be... Doesn't have to be above our mountain, right? That's the tip top of the tree right there. Doesn't have to go all the way above the mountain, but it's gotta be close. At least one of them has to go above the mountain. All right, I'm gonna come over here, and we're gonna come in and just start tapping. And he starts making like a, like a, um, a little Z shape. And it starts coming down, popping out, bam, bam, bam. You know what I mean? Bing, bang, boom, fill in the little bits, but not everything. So you have those little arms coming out, and that's an old saggy tree if you ever done did ask me right there. All right, let's put a little guy right next to him just because he looks lonely. And this guy's going to be an upward little tappy tree like this. Just tapping into the canvas, filling in all this space, coming around the side, making our little branches. Little branchy branches, right? And all we're doing is making it so we can have a little bit of, of shadow underneath, right? That's all you need. And then we'll come and we'll hit it with our white. And everything will change, right? So, let's wash off that brush because you want to have it nice, thick paint. You don't want to get too thin. You don't want to get too crazy. And let's put in another little bit of tree. Actually, you know what we should probably do is make this guy just a bit longer down here. There we go. Again, you're really only doing one side of the tree any time because you've got two in there, right? You don't have to stress about what both sides look like unless you're not going to cover with your other tree, right? If you're gonna cover with your other tree, just worry about what that one edge looks like that's hanging off the side, right? One little bit that you wanna come out and be nice and sharp, or be longer than the rest, right? It's just that one side that we're working on. I like that saggy old little tree. Very cool. Not everywhere, not too crazy. A Couple little bits that hang off. They don't have to be, you know, the same width or the same depth or the same distance any which way. Pull them down, and then we decide where we want to pull the bottom of our tree out. Very cool. Very cool. But we do want to wash it off, refill the brush. Got to wash it and refill it. Okay, let's grab this. And we're going to need to get more black, it seems, out of the old uh, paint box. A little bit of the white with it. Not too much, though. We don't want it to be super bright. We want it to come in. Just like this, come down in here, start popping little bits. Oh yeah, little bits of stuff. What's happening out here? Kind of covering over a little bit of our reflections, leaving some of them. Don't have to do everything, right? And then I like coming in and just deciding where we're gonna have a little bit of land just by pulling out from underneath those guys, just with the right amount of pressure, right? You decide where you want your land to sit in. How close do you want it to be? Do you want to be able to walk in there? Do you want to be able to just have the bushes go all the way off the bottom, right? Where you can't walk in through. 
where you can't have any little space. All right, gonna fill up the sides nice and textury and thick. That is the goal, you gotta have it thick. If it's not thick and, and fingery, I call it, where you have all those little bits that are hanging off the canvas waiting for your bit of texture, or waiting for your highlight, if you don't have those little fingery bits, then it just doesn't work as well. And look at those little things, you get the coolest little details just from having that extra thick paint right there on the brush, right? Very cool. All right, let's wash this guy off. Tell me what you guys, if you guys like this. You guys even like this painting? I don't even know. It's so weird not, like, I stream so much on TikTok. And on TikTok, everyone is much more talkative. They type a lot more. They ask more questions. It's just more of a, an interactive experience. And it seems like much of a, so much of a slower show when we do it over here on TikTok, uh, on uh, YouTube and Facebook without TikTok. Just seems like less, less action, just more chill over here, right? It's Friday night, we should just call it the Friday night chill hour. Hmm. All right, so, based on where we pulled this guy out, ooh, that was a big drink. Then we get a little bit lower and lower and lower, so our, our angle starts to change and go down. Almost makes it look kind of rounded like that. Well, that's what you want. Okay, we need to get more black paint out of the box. And there we go. Is that the right one? Yeah. I always have paint on my palette. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, how do you, uh, how do you store your paint? And I go, uh, right here because it never leaves, it just keeps getting added to, and then when the palette's too nasty to do anything with, then I send it to a fan. Man, that Dr. Pepper hit me, those 23 flavors. All right, let's wash this brush off. Gotta have clean tools. I never like looking down and seeing dirty tools. Now we're gonna come over here again. Should we do a, a paint with Josh kind of tappy tree, or should we do like a paint with Bram Bob Ross style saggy tree? You guys let me know. You gotta bring it up on your phone. I, I feel you, I feel you. It's more interactive on TikTok. They make it much more easy. Remember guys, if you're watching over on YouTube, make sure you give me a thumbs up. The more thumbs ups we have, the more people are gonna see the video. I'm taking in what you're doing. Tell us where to go on Amazon. All right, go to amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. All right, so type it into your web browser and once you hit go, it will open up Amazon right onto your phone uh, right through the app. So amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. And I just got a question about the round brush that we're using. Whoop. It's the Bob Ross half size round. Looks just like this. And I mean, mine, this is a brand new one we haven't used yet. Mine is very nasty. Let's see if we can do like that trick with the pen. Oh, oh, we did it. We caught it. Look at that. Hell, almost had it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Saggy, you want another saggy tree? Oh, well, someone says my kind of tree. I don't know, guys, it's a tie now. Who wants to see a saggy tree? Who wants to see a bright, like, happy, you know, little happy tappy tree that looks like it's alive versus, you know, old and tired? Let's see. Imagine a toasted PB&J and I. I assume it's similar, yeah. Let's see, do a snow drift against you. Oh, I, for sure, we're gonna add our highlights and stuff, definitely. Definitely, saggy, 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 your kind. Okay, saggy's winning, guys. Anybody over on YouTube? Make sure you give me a thumbs up over there if you guys are watching over on YouTube. A Josh tree, a happy tree, saggy. <laughs> All right, we'll do some more saggy trees. We'll keep them the same. All right, even though, well, we've already got a sort of a little paint with Josh tree over there, but we'll keep this guy the same. Again, right into our black. And this guy, we need a little bit more paint. We need to be a little bit taller. A little bit, I want to be a baller, I want to be a shot caller, right? Come over here, a little taller than the mountain. Actually, just about the same size of the mountain, just like that. Tap down a little bit. It's all Bram does, it just taps it a couple times, right? And then we're gonna come over here and just start sagging off. But now I'm gonna work on this side of the tree and what that's gonna look like, right? So what if we did this? We started tapping little things, right? And then we come down back and forth, making that Z shape, right? And then we'll go back and fill them all in afterwards. Come back in here. I think that'll look really cool when we go back and fill it in, right? Once we have enough paint on our brush. So 
So let's go back and load it up. Come into here. Where are we going? You gotta have the top looking good, right? We're just packing back and forth. Bam, bam, bam. Try not to fill in every single little place with the darkness, but right here in the center, like you gotta have at least like one brush length filled in the center, because that's where the trunk would be in your in your tree. You know what I mean? So come over, pop out. Come over, pop out. A little bit shorter, a little bit longer the next time. A little bit shorter, a little bit longer the next time. Shorter, longer, tap them in, fill them in, mushing the whole brush as much as I can possibly get against the canvas, right? Until you get out here, and then you use that light touch to just get those little bits off the end. And then we go back and highlight. So don't worry what it looks like now. Don't worry at all. You just wanna have a lot of texture up there. Get those old saggy trees that look like they're just tired. And just like, oh, I can't take it anymore. Some, just to have a, have a lightning bolt knock me over or something, right? Again, then you decide where you want it to live. I'm gonna have it drag right down here, almost like we'll have a little pathway come right out. And then we can walk down to our little lake, right? And just pulling in those little directions and we start to shape it, right? Curving like a little smiley face. You pull down too much over here and it's gonna look like it's sitting up on the edge of a cliff, right? Just little things and then maybe we'll have a little path come out here. It'd be very cool. In order to do our path, I probably wanna have it very dark compared to everything else and a little bit longer, right? So I have it come out over there. It's wider and wider and wider. Now we have a little place that we can walk down and hang out by the, by the water, right? There we go, I'll make it perspectively right. Bam, cool little bit of darkness and I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you what I mean, jelly beans. Just like this, gonna get our, our uh, one inch brush, gonna clean it off. And that way it's not all nasty, right? Because you want to maintain your bright whites so you don't want to have any other color on your brush. You have a nice clean brush. And then we'll come in, we'll do the snow first. So we'll get over here, big thick amount, come back, right? Start dropping it down, dropping it in, bringing it down to our little bit of, of pathway down here. All depends on what we want it to look like, how far you pull up into your bushes, that's all on you, right? And I like to swipe them up into the bushes like that. It makes it, gives it like little drag marks like the shadows on our seascapes, right? You get those little things that look like a little bit of shadow down in there. Very cool. Don't want to cover up all of our little path. Come back here, grab some more white. Look, I have to pull down from down here because it's going to diminish the color of our white right there. Come over here. We had all of our brightness on this side, so I want this side to be very bright in comparison, right? Just like that, guys. Little bit, slide it down. We get to decide what it looks like. Bing, bang, boom. Get our little pathway that's going down to the water, man. Woo! That looks cool. Again, take it and swipe it up into the tree like that. Little bits, little things create little bits of shadow in our snow banks. And little differences go across our path because we don't want it to be just pure black, right? There we go. But you want it to be darker than anything else. And then maybe we can work this bit of white over it until we shrink it down to whatever you want it to look like. It's all up to you. It's not my painting. This is painting number 738. I don't need to do any more practice. It's up to you guys. I'm just trying to teach you guys cool little different things, different ways to do easy stuff, right? Easy is more fun than hard, in my opinion. If it's easy, you're gonna to wanna to do it more, right? Now we're gonna come back. We're gonna get a little bit of our liquid white, that right? That very wet white paint that we initially put on the canvas to start. And we're gonna come in here and dab into our titanium white pile, right? Getting all those crazy little bits of texture and fingery bits all stuck up in here. And we're gonna come out, go above our shadows, right? You don't start just trying to cover all the shadows. Some areas have to be above your shadowy bit, right? Come in here, let's get some more paint. Dab in a little bit more white so it comes off a little thicker. Oh yeah, not trying to cover everything, right? Little things. I'm trying to cover half of our little bits of bush. Got to leave some shadowy areas back there, right? And maybe all of those bits of tree would be covering. So I'm just going to tap in small little things that might have got, you know, a little bit of light back in there. Not as bright as all the rest of them, of course. But, oh yeah, just like that. Very cool. Got to have some shadowy areas back in here, though. You have to. You can't have them all be the same. 
If they're all the same, then we've not done our job of providing all those little details, right? Very cool, guys. Woo, I like that. All right, let's get rid of that old brush. And then we'll go highlight these trees. Really brighten those trees up. So you guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite pie? And bonus points, if you know Paint with Josh's favorite pie. What's my favorite pie? That's the question. Do you know the Muffin Man? He lives on Drury Lane. And what kind of pie he likes? All right. Let's see. I want to see your favorite pie and then what you think my favorite pie is. Okay? In that order. What's your favorite pie? Then what's my favorite pie? Apple. Bridget. I mean, do you know that's my favorite pie or are you saying that's your favorite pie? Let's see. Oh, Brenda knows mine is apple. I mean, she's sort of right. I can't make them wrong, guys. Can't make them wrong. Let's take a little of our dark. And just every so often, just going to have a little tree trunk in this old guy. It might show. We might not even allow it to show. But it all depends. It doesn't have to be connected. We just want to have it there. And then we can go over it with our bit of, uh, of highlight. And if you put it in the wrong spot, scrape it off a little bit. Move it over, put it back where you're supposed to put it, right? Come on, Josh, you amateur. I can't even see you guys. There we go. I'm just over here placing it where it should be. All right, now we're gonna take our same brush. We're gonna go back into that same liquid white because it's nice and sloppy and wet. And when it's wet, it slides easier, right? Let's do this. Uh, let's do this, run it through the paint. I'm thinking of paint with Bram for whatever reason. He messaged me earlier today. I'm going to tap into the top just like that. And then we're just going to go on this one side and just start tapping out our little bits as they start hanging off of our tree. Right? Not every piece has to be lit up. Just like that, guys. The little things start coming out. Right? And come down. Not even lighting up every single bit of the tree. You want to have some areas that are nice and shadowy. Got to have our deep, dark, shadowy spots. Right? And that's why we allow this other paint to slowly work in with those shadows as it gets deeper and darker and darker towards the back. And so you have a lighter side and a darker side. Just like that. Very cool. Oh, I love it. Nice, snowy, cold little painting. Even though it's only black and white, it's still cold. It's freezing over here. Let's take this guy, work a little bit of the light back over to the side. Just a couple little bits. Don't want to have too much up there, right? But it's never going to be all the same. I don't like it to be all the same anyway. A couple little taps on our other little guy. Lighten his branches up over there. Very cool. Just got to have that little bit of darkness in between is all you really want. A couple little things. Like I said, sometimes if you get a big glob on one of your branches, it's okay. It holds, pain. It holds snow differently in different places. That's my opinion anyway. There we go. Very cool, guys. Very, very neat. I love them little saggy trees. So we're going to go back. We're going to get more of our liquid, uh, liquid white and then more of our titanium white. We're going to run it through the same mill right over here, right? Just like this. Got to have it the right texture. Going to come up, going to tap the top just in case we have any little bits up there. And then we're going to come off and do it this way. I'm going to pop out. Right? Some bits are brighter. Some bits are not. Little pieces, right? We're starting to have to push too hard. So let's go back and get some more paint. Wash our brush off. Get some more paint. You don't want to push or have to push too hard. Otherwise, you're going to smush the, uh, you're going to smush all the details that you're trying to keep, right? That's not what we want. So come over here. Work out, work down, little different directions. Come back onto the other side. Slowly working them back into that darkness so it's not just pure black, right? Got a little bit of shadow. Oh, that's wicked. I love that right there. That is a cool one, you guys. All right, well, this painting didn't sell, so I guess I'm not coming back later to paint. But that's fine. I could use a good night off. I could use a night off. I was going to do like a sea, like a sunset eclipse seascape, but I think it might just be a night on the couch for old Paint with Josh. All right. 
this is how I make my money, guys. I try to paint these paintings to show you, and we try to sell them. And so uh, on days that they sell, Paint with Josh can paint the rent, right? <laughs> paint the rent. Pay the rent. There we go. So, all right, guys. Well, uh, this one turned out fantastic, in my opinion. Let's take our little liner brush, and we're going to come over here into our dark mixture of our paint, our black, right? Because we're only using black and white, and it's very thin and very sharp. And then we're going to decide, maybe up here, we're going to come in and make our little bird family in here. Just like that. Bing, bang, boom. We might need a little bit more of our thinner, actually. Because it's not coming off of the brush easily, right? So, if it doesn't come off easily, go back, dip your brush back into the thinner, run it back through your little pile of paint, and then it should be, oh yeah, much darker. Comes off much easier. Just like so. Get our little family off there flying in the distance. Now, let's paint or sign this guy right down here in the corner for this one. So, I'm so happy that you guys were able to tune in and have fun right over here at Paint with Josh. We love doing this. We do it every single night over on TikTok. So, just give in and download TikTok. Follow Paint with Josh K. That's the only person you need to follow on TikTok. And we do this every night. So, if you like doing stuff like this or hanging out, watching some cool little techniques be taught, then get your butt over to TikTok. I'm doing it all the time over there. Let's take our knife, scrape it a couple little sticks and twigs. Those are my favorite little details. All, right, all we're doing is revealing the white canvas underneath and scraping away a little bit of that paint. So back into our dark spots, little branches, little sticks, like to pop up out of everywhere, holding up all of these flowers, right? Very cool. All right, guys. This one turned out excellent. I am excited. I love the new studio over here. Lots of room for activities. So we have tons of prints out, by the way, guys. If you can't afford a, a full-size painting or a real original canvas painting, that's why I make prints. I made, uh, tw I think, 10 prints available uh, on top of the other 40 that were already there. Five of them are brand new. So we've got 50-something uh, brand new prints. And the more prints that sell, the more money my manager makes. So he needs a paycheck, guys. Get over there and buy some prints. He came over and took the, the most awesome pictures. And I was like, dude, you take a percentage of whatever this is just for these photos, just because they're fantastic. So if you think the quality of the prints is going to be blurry or whatever, it's literally going to look like this painting without being able to feel the texture. You're going to see everything that you see right now. You just won't be able to feel it. It'll be nice and smooth when you run your hand across and they actually come on a thicker, better made, better quality canvas than what we actually paint on. So the only thing that makes it valuable is my actual hand touch this one, right? Versus the print, which is just a copy of this exact painting. So have you guys been thinking of a name to name this thing? Normally we wait for it to be bought uh, and then the buyer gets to choose. But if it doesn't get purchased, then guess who gets to pick the name and give out a shout out, guys? Yours truly over here, right? Mm. So, what should we title this painting? Hit me with a name, and uh, maybe, just maybe, I'll choose the name that you put forth, and we'll see what we got going on. Why is my lighting so crazily bright today? There we go. So, let's see, guys. Hit me with some names and a cool little hour-long painting. So, you keep getting mud when you do wet on wet. That means you're, you're not following the three Ps of Paint with Josh, right? You have pressure, paint, pressure, and practice, right? So, you have too much paint, and too much pressure. You're pushing too many times. You're smushing all of the paints together, right? It's like, this is what you're doing. You're taking white paint and black paint and smushing them. Every time you dab, you're mixing it, mixing it, mixing it, mixing it, mixing it, turning the dark into a very light gray. Therefore, your white highlights will not stand out. So it's all about the pressure, right? At first, when we put them on, we push hard to make our little shape of our bush. Right, then when we come back with the highlights, pressure, lightest bit to come off of the brush and stick on to those little fingery bits, right? That are hanging off already. The more you mush, the more you're smashing all those little fingery bits and you're just sitting there mixing them all up. And that's why you're making mud. It's all about pressure. The number two P, right? The amount of paint, pressure, and practice will get you the perfect bushes, okay? I'm telling you, 
Let's see. Hey, Adam Luerman, what's happening, buddy? Long time no see. Let's see. Where's Melody and Nicole and them <laughs> to buy this painting? That's funny. All right, guys, give me a name. Does anyone have a name for this? The Road Less Traveled, that's fantastic. Cold Mountain Ringe, Wonder Snow, Reflections, Winter Mist. Let's see. Bop, 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 bop. You're welcome, Jeffrey. Love it, Sheila. Thank you. Melanie's like, oh, I'm here, but uh, I've bought too many of the Paint With Josh paintings. Uh, what's the price? So this price, it should be 300 and about 300, like 303 with some change. Uh, it's 40% off. You get worldwide shipping and... Um, It'll go anywhere in the world. I really like these uh, these little trees right here, guys. These are wicked awesome. I might have to start doing some more saggy trees in the future. Now, the name that we got to choose here, we got Mystic Mountain. Let's see. I love The Road Less Traveled by Spring Simmons. The Road Less Traveled, right? Maybe it dips down and goes down underneath. I really like that title. So, Spring Simmons wins. You get to name the Paint with Josh painting. Now we actually have to finish around the edges because we forgot to put any sky color around the top, guys. There we go. Just like this. Bing, bang, boom. And then we'll go name this old guy. I love finishing the sides because you never know if it gets purchased. You don't know if they're going to frame it, if they're going to uh, just take it right out the box and hang it right up onto the wall. And that's how I like mine to be done, right? I want them finished. So you, are, you don't have to frame it. You don't have to go buy a crazy frame or have, you know, go to Michael's and go, oh, yeah, it'll be $280 to frame it. You're like, no way, I didn't even pay that much for the painting. Well, for this one, barely. I barely, barely paid that much for the painting. All right, so I like to finish the edges and that way you don't have to frame it. You can literally take it out. And ask Melanie, she's bought like 30 of my paintings. Ask her how gorgeous they are on the sides, right? So let's spin this guy around. And then we're going to sign this old guy's gorgeous little painting. I love it. I might have to take this one out of the store, guys, because I like it so much. All right. Got that. Got that. And this is 738, didn't I say? Did I say it was 738? I can't even remember. I can't even remember how many paintings we've done now. Let's see. Yeah, 738. Okay, let's title this guy right here. Let's see, the road less traveled. Hey, we've got somebody over in the Etsy store favoriting stuff. So you guys can go over to youtube.com and watch this stream over again once soon as we get done. It'll be restarted, and that's youtube.com slash paintwithjosh, right? That's where you can find all of the videos. And all you guys over there on YouTube, come over and watch me on Facebook. Right? That's where we're going to go post the image first. And then you can zoom in and check it out, and then decide whether or not you want to buy it after zooming in and seeing all the details, right? Go over to Facebook. And then both of you guys need to go over to TikTok. Stop giving me that crap about, I don't use TikTok. This, that, the other. Literally every app is spying on us. Like, literally. I said something the other day. We were talking about, like, Granger air filters. I said that, and later on on Facebook, opened it up. Guess the first thing that was up there? Granger air filters. That's on Facebook. That's not, a, it's not from TikTok, okay? So, everything is listening to everything. Stop being a, a, a negative Nancy. Get over there and download TikTok. And then just follow one person. That's all you got to follow. Right? TikTok and Instagram are all the same for me. But TikTok.com slash, then you put the at symbol, and then paint with Josh K. All you got to do is add a K to that one, right? So we'll put Instagram down here. My Instagram has exploded, guys, to over 170,000 followers, I would imagine, from 3,000. I had 3,000 seven days ago, and now I've got 170,000 a week later. It's insane. Right? And again, that's the same as my TikTok, which is Paint with Josh K. You have to add the K on there if you want to find me on Instagram and find me on TikTok. And then, of course, everybody's going to go over to paintwithjosh.com. And from paintwithjosh.com, you can go find my Etsy store. You can find the YouTube, the Facebook, the TikTok, the Instagram, all the links, every which where. But uh, my manager is going to kill me if, you, if I don't say go to paintwithjosh.com first. Right? And then in the meantime, if you wanted to buy this painting 
or get it as a gift for somebody, you go to uh, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. There we go. Gorgeous. Now, let's flip this guy around and see this beautiful painting that we put together today. And it is just fantastic, black and white. I mean, you really don't get more challenging than a limited palette with just two colors because you only have two colors, right? You have to make sure that this dark is darker than that dark. See what I mean? Can't go this black way back there. It would trick our eye and make them seem like they were both at the same distance, right? These guys are getting more light because they're on that side. This side, a little bit darker, darker paint, deeper, darker shadows. That's what sells your painting, those dark shadows right there. And that's what you need. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching. We don't want to hang out for too long. And uh, even though this one didn't sell, I might just go hang it up in my bedroom and then go over to TikTok and have some fun. All right, a lot of interaction over there. A lot more people watch. It's a lot of fun. So. And they got cool little GIFs and animated things on the screen that's more of a show for you than it is for me because I never even get to see them. So who knows? Maybe we'll go downstairs. We might get in the mood. Want to come back upstairs and create. And uh, if we do, it's going to be on TikTok. So make sure you're following me over there. TikTok.com slash at Paint with Josh. And uh, I love you guys. I can't wait to do this again. Tomorrow morning at 9, we're going to be doing something. I don't know. Maybe I'll do like a blue and black and white and show you one more scene with just a limited palette, right? Uh, and then Sunday more, uh, Sunday afternoon, we're doing uh, the battle with Bram and that's going to be a sunset seascape. So I can't wait. I love you guys so much and I thank you for being here and watching with me and hanging out. And until I see you guys again next time, take care, have the rest of your day, and ba pow Get up out of here, Josh. It's over. Thanks, Josh. I will get him out of here. See you later, guys.